Hello, everyone from Freedom Tax Accounting. We are an, an accounting firm here in Florida. We have more than 20 years of experience and we are uh, authorized by the federal government to represent individuals and businesses in all 50 US states. We want to make this video because the IDLE loan is a very popular SBA loan program. And we, in the last several months, we have done over 400 IDLE loan applications for our clients. And we always like to talk to our clients before they sign the loan documents because we really want them to know exactly what they're signing off to. The, the IDLE loan is a very good loan. It's a very good commercial loan program from the SBA. And, but it does have rules. It does have restrictions. And a lot of people, the, once, they, once they apply, they get to the part of signing off the application and the loan documents, they sign them very quickly and they don't read exactly all the terms and conditions this IDLE loan will represent for their business. So we wanted to go, we wanted to do this video where we're going to show the actual um, loan agreement and we're going to go through the agreement completely, paragraph by paragraph, so you know exactly what the IDLE loan terms and conditions are and that you can make a very educated decision if you want to get this loan or not, okay? So let's go to the loan documents. Once you accept the loan documents and you sign them, this is what you're going to get. This is the actual loan authorization terms and conditions form that you get from the SBA, okay? Now, as you might expect, this document has a lot of legal terms, but I highlighted the parts that we feel we should definitely discuss with you guys that may have serious implications in the future for your business. So let's start going through the document. So once we start scrolling down, the first part, it says loan authorization and agreement. So here it details the payment terms. As you can see in this example, this client received a $73,400 IDLE loan. So his monthly fee is $358 a month, okay? It states here that you will begin doing payments towards the loan 12 months after the date of the promissory note. So once you sign this agreement, you have 12 months to start making payments. Now, that sounds good that you don't have to start making payments in 12 months, but know that the interest will accrue during this 12 months. So for some of our accounting clients, that got the idle loan, we are advising them not to wait for 12 months without making payments, that they got the loan, they should start making those monthly payments now. And let me show you why. If you go to Google and you look up any accrued interest calculator, you may come across something like this. So let's say that you got $150,000 IDLE loan. That as of today, June 16th, that is the max, but that may change in the future. The interest rate in the IDLE loan is 3.75 unless you are a nonprofit. No required payments for 12 months. Okay. And this interest accrues monthly. All right, so look at this. In 12 months, this loan will accrue $5,625. So that's a lot. So that's why uh, for some of our accounting clients, we are telling them to start making 
payments now and not wait the 12 months. Now we know that every case is different. We know that there's a lot of businesses going through financial hardship. So if you can't make those monthly payments, it's okay. We just wanted to show that you do accrue interest in those 12 months, okay? As you can see here, it's, it's saying that the interest will accrue at a rate of 3.75%. Um, payment terms, it says each payment will be applied first to interest accrued to the date of receipt of payment and the balance, if any, will be applied to principal. So basically, this uh, payment terms works like a, like a home payment, like a mortgage loan, where most of your per payment at the beginning will be uh, applied towards the interest. And later on, more and more will get applied towards the, back, towards the principal. So it's, the similar, it's similar as a mortgage loan, okay? Now, this is where a lot of people, where we need to talk with our clients is about collateral. If you get an idle loan over $25,000, the SBA will require collateral. Now, collateral may be any assets your business has. It can be tangible or intangible property. It can be savings accounts, inventory, credit cards, deposit accounts. And, but any loan that's under $25,000 or less, it will not require collateral. Now, further down, we're going to see that you do have also some restrictions on this collateral. So this is kind of like a turnoff for a lot of people. They don't want to go through the risk of losing their assets in the business. And some of our clients... Um, have decided just to take a loan of $25,000 or less so they don't have to deal with any issues of collateral with the SBA in the future. So here, requirements relative to collateral. Borrower will, will not sell or transfer any collateral except normal inventory turnover without prior written consent to the SBA. So what does this mean? This means that let's say that your business owns a building or that you own uh, equipment, you own vehicles. All that is collateral now that, that the SBA has a lien on that collateral. So you just can't sell it. If you want to sell it, you need to inform the SBA that you want to sell whatever they have as collateral so you can't sell it um, before uh, letting the SBA know that you are going to sell it, okay? Now, very important, you, the use of loan proceeds solely as working capital to alleviate economic injury. So this is very important because a lot of our clients are asking us, What's ca what can I use my idle loan for? Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in this topic because we do have another YouTube video where we de de detail what you can use the idle loans for. But in general, you have to use it as working capital. You cannot use it for any kind of expansion, meaning you cannot buy properties, you cannot buy vehicles. You cannot buy any kind of, basically, you cannot buy any kind of new assets that will depreciate on a tax return, okay? And you can't use it to, keep, to give the owners bonuses nor distributions. You can use it for payroll. And if you are the owner, you can pay your regular payroll with the idle loan. But you can't give yourself a draw. You cannot give yourself distributions. And this will affect a lot of business owners, especially S-Corp owners, which you, uh, if you are an S-Corp, you should be in payroll. But if you know a very common tax strategy for S-Corp owners is to have payroll, but also to take draws and distributions at the end of the year. 
You cannot use the idle loan funds for draws nor distributions. Now, if you also got the PPP loan, during the covered period of your PPP loan, either the eight weeks or now the 24 weeks, you cannot use the PPP funds and the idle funds for the same expenses. So let's say you, you got the PPP loan and you're using those PPP funds now. You, you're supposed to use most of those funds for payroll. So during the covered period of your PPP loan, use your PPP funds for payroll, but don't use your idle funds for payroll. And you can use the PPP funds for the rent and utilities, but don't use the idle funds for rent and utilities. Now, once your PPP covered period is over, then you can use the idle funds for payroll, rent, and utilities. But you cannot use the PPP and the idle funds in the PPP covered period for the same expenses. If not, whatever you, if you duplicate the expenses with the idle, whatever you use will be refinanced into your PPP loan and it will not be forgiven. Okay? But once again, we do have another video where we go into detail what you can use the idle funds for. Next paragraph, requirements for use of loan proceeds. Here, once again, borrower will obtain and itemize receipts of contracts for all loan funds spent and retain these receipts for three years. So basically it's telling you, but in the bottom it says five years. So you do have to keep records of what you use your loans funds for, accounting, contracts, receipts. Um, you do have the documentation will be key in order to keep compliant with SBA rules. Here it says borrower will not use any portion of the proceeds of this loan to relocate. So if you are in, if your business is in one location, you cannot move without asking the SBA's decision, the permission. So that's, uh, that's important because uh, we have several clients that due to the pandemic, they may have had to close their business where they are now and they're looking for another location, but they already got their idle loan. So right now they are talking to the SBA to ask permission if they can move. Here it says, uh, borrower will to the extent feasible purchase only American made equipment and products with the proceeds of this loan. So that's another important detail. Now see, compensation from other sources. Now this is very important. If you got the idle loan, but you have also received this um, compensated or, got, or received funds from other sources due to the pandemic, maybe from insurance policies or other grants or other reimbursements, you have to let the SBA know because the SBA may determine that they, that you're gonna have to pay those offers from the idle funds or they may call the person who gave you the loan or the grant and to let them know, look, don't give this money to the business, give that money to me and then they, they will use that as payment towards the idle funds, okay? Here it says, borrower will promptly notify SBA of existence of status of any claim or application for such other compensation and a receipt of such compensation. And borrower will promptly submit the proceeds of the same to the SBA. SBA in its sole discretion de uh, de determine whether any such compensation from other sources is a duplication of benefits. SBA will use the proceeds of such duplication to reduce the astounding balance of this loan. So once again, if you are getting funds 
from another agency, you have to let the SBA know because they may take that uh, those funds and apply it as payment towards the IRO loan. Now, duty of maintenance of hazard insurance. This is only if you got a loan over $25,000 and you have to provide collateral. The SBA says within 12 months from the date of this loan authorization and agreement, the borrower will provide proof of an active and in effect hazard insurance policy, including fire, lightning, and extended coverage on all items used to secure this loan. So if you had to put up collateral, this may be an additional business expense that you may have to get that you did not have in the past. Usually property has hazard insurance, but let's say that you put as collateral vehicles or equipment. Those usually don't have a very uh, protective hazard insurance, but now you may have to get hazard insurance for your equipment and your vehicles to comply with SBA idle rules. Now, books and records. Borrower will maintain current and proper books of account in a matter satisfactory to SBA for the most recent five years. Such books will include financial and operating statements, insurance policies, tax returns. Basically, you have to, sh you have to keep good accounting the way the SBA wants you to keep your books because um, they're going to ask for your financials periodically, okay? As you can see here, it says, um, you will furnish to the SBA no later than three months following the expiration of the borrower's fiscal year. And in such form, the SBA may require borrower's financial statements. So most businesses, the fiscal year ends December 31st. So by March of every year, you're going to have to provide financial statements to the SBA the way they require it. So make sure that you're working with a CPA who knows idle rules, okay? Because you're going to have to provide the SBA these financials every month, okay? Here it says that if if you, the SBA does want to audit you, any expenses of the audit has to come out of your pocket. Okay? So let's keep going. Limits on distribution. Borrower will not, without the prior written consent of the SBA, make any distribution of assets or give any preferential treatment, make any advance directly or indirectly by way of loan, gift, bonus, of otherwise, to any owner or partner. So basically, you just can't use the funds to do distribution and bonuses. You have to let the SBA know uh, first. Equal opportunity, basically that you are, are an equal opportunity employer. You have to do that by federal and state law anyway. You certify that you don't have any type of tax liens or felonies in the past. You have to certify that you're not behind on child support because that may uh, affect your loan's default. Um, this is very important. Whoever wrongfully misapplies the proceeds of SBA disaster loan shall be civilly liable to the administrator in the amount equal to one and a half times the original principal amount. And you are subject to fines, imprisonment, or both. Basically, it's, it's telling you that if you do not use the funds correctly, you may go to jail and you may get a fine of one and a half the amount of your loan. So let's say you got a $100,000 loan and you get a penalty of this nature. Now you get a penalty of $150,000. Okay, so 
See how there's these little details that you have to know before you sign. So make sure that you know what you can use the funds for. Once again, we have another video where we detail what you can use the idle funds for or get the help of a CPA or an accounting firm that knows idle rules so they can guide you and help you on how to use the funds. Okay. Here it says that this agreement is binding in all your business successors uh, and assigns. That means that, let's say that you sell your business, you are still um, liable for this loan and you, you really can't sell the business before telling the SBA first. So here... It says certification of lobbying. This is just legal terms saying that you cannot use the funds nor be part of any type of lobbying group. This is a poster that you're supposed to have on your business and in any wall in your business, the equal employment opportunity. This is just a poster that they provide. It is in English and in Spanish. So you just have to print this out and have it somewhere that it is visible in your business. And let's go now to the note. So this is the promissory note, okay? Once again, it details the payment terms, 12 months without a deferral to make payments. Here, it gives you details that this idle loan will go into default if you do not make payment, if you sell or transfer collateral or, or its proceeds. So whatever the SBA has as collateral, you cannot sell or transfer it without letting the SBA know. Defaults on any loan or agreement with another creditor. So if you have loans some with another agency, you cannot be at default with them either. Fails, you can also go into default if your business fails to pay any taxes when due. If your business goes into bankruptcy or insolvency of law, then the idle loan will become a default as, as well. It will become default if you reorganize, merge, consolidate, change ownership, change business structure, uh, change the name. So basically, you cannot change your business structure. You cannot sell your business. You cannot change ownership of your business without letting the SBA know or your idle loan be will become default. Okay. Here it says that the SBA without notice or demand has the right to require immediate payment and without notice or demand, they may take possession of any collateral, sell, lease, or dispose of your collateral. So basically, if you're behind on your payments, you're basically given the SBA permission to they can sell uh, or take possession of your collateral and they don't have to send you any kind of notice. It says here that federal law applies. So if you're in a state that you think you can get away or that you can defend yourself with the SBA, with state laws, here it says that federal laws apply. Now, this is very important. The borrower, borrower may not use an oral statement of SBA to contradict or alter the written terms of this note. Why is this important? It's basically saying, if you don't have it on paper, it will not, you cannot use it in any type of court. And why is this important? There are some people in YouTube that are calling the SBA and talking to SBA officers and they're asking them questions and the SBA officer is giving them answers and is being recorded in YouTube. So basically here, you cannot use that as guidance. So if 
you see a YouTube video and you saw someone record an SBA officer giving them or answering them a question and you make a decision based on what you heard on the YouTube video, that is not sufficient to defend yourself in court. It has to be written. Okay, here it says that you can be uh, civilly liable of one and a half the proceeds. We had already seen that. We continue down. This is the security agreement of the collateral. Basically, this is a description of everything the SBA thinks can be used as collateral. Restrictions on collateral transfer. We already talked about that, that you cannot uh, sell or transfer ownership of your collateral unless you uh, inform the SBA first. Here it says that you have to keep your collateral in good condition. And if real estate is part of your collateral, you have to pay all the taxes of the property. Uh, well, if not, it will go into default. Once again, it details that you cannot change your legal structure, place of business without letting the SBA know. Here it's more of the things we had discussed before, and that is it. So basically, now you know exactly what you're getting into with this loan. I hope this video has been good for you. If this has been of value, please subscribe and like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are posting videos with all, all the most current information in PPP, Idle, or any type of business help. We want to thank you. We want to pray for you. We are going to pray for your business. We're going to pray for your family. And we are going to keep trusting God that he's in control of this situation. If you need any type of help, we are providing uh, EIDL applications assistance or EIDL accounting assistance. Because remember, once you get the funds, either PPP or idle loans, you must have your books done in a specific way that the SBA will require you to have those books done in order not to get in trouble with the SBA. Okay, so we are providing that help to our accounting clients. This is our contact information. God bless you and thank you.